Dayseeker, without me, it's about time I did a vocal analysis of Rory Rodriguez. This is going to be one fascinating vocal analysis. And if you'd like more help developing some of the things that you hear in his voice, in your voice, click the link below and join my free voice course. And I will help you create a foundation with your voice that will allow you to get some of these sounds and some of the amazing range that guys like Rory are able to pull off. Feeling like I should have been feeling something Lately I've been putting it off to see if Eh, eh, see if This is important to understand about this type of singing and Rory's approach to his, his more subdued approach. There's an intentional bit of whisper going on. If, 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 eh, where he's letting a little bit more air through. A lot of people might say, oh, that's gonna hurt your voice. No, it's not gonna hurt your voice if it's done in moderation and with the right balance of air pressure. Lately I've been putting it off to see if you'd come back crawling, the floor is falling now. So don't you There's some harmonies back there, but there's also da da da. Don't you hold me? Don't you hold me? That's also happening. There are layers that are just whisper tracks. I'm fairly positive that's happening. I've done that on recordings, and so I I know how that it's a, it's a detached from the main vocal, but because he's already singing breathy, it ties in so perfectly. Run from. There's also a very subtle low octave in there. Amazing arrangement. His head voice approach, right? There's already breath in there, and then there's the sun. That, and then there's the, the all the you know, lower octaves and everything. What a wonderful set of textures that are operating as one cohesive unit. Let's get some, uh, let's get some eruption of sound here in a second. Hear the higher octave up there? Okay, we gotta listen to that section again. Watch how he, and listen to how he, he brings in more vocal weight to certain notes by bringing his resonance forward and belting just for a note or two and then lightens up and goes into that run. There is so much agility and I'm not just talking about like being able to go around to different notes. There's so much agility present in how he's dynamically altering the weight of his voice. I'm doing it really goofily. Being able to do things goofily like that and experience how that feels to modify your weight and and 
and uh, go all over the place with dynamics is a huge reason he's so agile being able to go around to different notes. They don't seem like they're related, but they really, really are. You can call it off when you see I ain't shit. That's a perfect example right there. Notes, lately I've been putting it off. If we ease into lately, lately I've been putting it off. See what I did there? This is not, lately I've been putting it off. It's also not, lately I've been putting it off. Off. If I sing off like I sing, lately I be. It, it, it locks me in and I sound like I'm whining. If he didn't, like bookend that phrase with an off, off, lately I've been putting it off. Like that's what the character needs. That's what is. That's what that line needs. And it's because the off is sung so differently than the lately I've been putting it. Listen again. And he lightens right back up there. That subtle head voice note. Constant weight differentials. <laughs> Just on come. Come, come back. Come back crawling. Did you hear that? Don't? Don't you? <laughs> Let's hone that. Don't you? Don't. Don't. Oh. Don't you? Don't, don't, don't lengthen. Don't you? Don't you? Yeah. Experimenting like this is the only way to really even start to approach this kind of stuff. Let yourself sound dumb. We got to talk about his vocal posture here. That note up there, he's got a higher, lighter voice to begin with. He's very much uh, in the in the tenor classification. And so he can hit that note in a confident chest note and not have it be too weighty and also add a bit of compression to get a little bit of grit. With someone who has a bit more weight to their voice, like myself, I've got to go into mix in order to get that note and have it not be too... How do you feel the sun? I can't do it. I can't do it in chest voice. I have to mix and then I have to add compression to my mix. I have to thin out and actually access where my head voice is operating. How do you feel the sun? Sun! and then add weight to my head voice by compressing into it. And I, I've talked about compression in a lot of other videos, but it's this idea to get the, the initial sensation of compression, we will lift something heavy and sort of grunt into it. Ha, 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 uh, lifting the desk. Son, now, try doing that in head voice. Son, 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 son. And we get a bit more weight and actually some grit. This sounds as good as it's going to get uh, for a voice that's weightier. And a lot of people who try to sing higher by imitating true tenors, if they aren't a true tenor and don't have that chest, high chest voice developed, they end up straining so much and it sounds nothing like this kind of singing. So if we have a, a weightier voice, we have to use mixed voice and a compressed mixed voice to get there. <laughs> Uh, 
without me. Another huge component here is, like I talked about earlier, constantly modifying the weight of our voice per syllable, per phrase, so that we don't get locked into trying to be one way in one posture. That's going to tire us out and it's going to keep us from being free enough to navigate the different ways we need to resonate in order to handle those higher notes. He didn't have to worry about a lot of this in this particular range of his voice because he has a naturally higher voice. His compression, though, that holding back of air and, and not just bleh, completely going at it, there's it's, it's creating a wonderful sheen on his voice. Hey, that little squeak, love those. Leave me empty when it's only in my eyes. How do you feel the same without me? How do you feel the same when I don't sleep? <laughs> Oh, the May. Oh, it gets me every time. <laughs> Listen to this section again. Hear that broke up more than any other note so far? Down May! There's this sense that he's pushing his voice beyond his limit and actually leaning into his vocal break, which I have talked about in a lot of other videos. But listen to this again, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, make it ugly. Down my, my, don't my. That's a huge exaggeration, but that's what's happening. It's this sense that we're going down my. But as soon as we feel our voice start to crack a little bit, put in that compression that I was talking about earlier. This gets you a, a, a more screamed, like a pitch screamed sound instead of a compressed, distorted note. And if we want to dial that back, down may! Here it's not, I mean, I'm not totally losing it, right? But it's more juicy than down may! There's that, which is like this harmonic distortion, kind of a richness. And then there's down may! You still hear the note, but it's, it's the vocal break. just soars. Without me. That is far from the first time I've heard that song. I felt like I had to start the day seeker journey on this channel with that one. Thanks for watching. Again, if you'd like more help with your voice, click the link below and join my free course. More day seeker on the channel to come. We'll see you for more.